Thank you for the opportunity to present to you this evening. Tonight, I'm excited to share with you information regarding the many ways that our students of the Springport Area School District have to earn um, college credit while still a, a high school student. Before discussing the opportunities which we currently offer, I'd like to take a moment to dive into the differences between advanced placement and dual enrollment. While there's many similarities, both programs offer opportunities for students to engage in high level, college level work while in, in high school. Um, students have the opportunities to earn high school or college credit while in high school. And the, the opportunities may also impact their placement when they, when they go on to college. In advanced placement, exams are typically administered in May, um, and the scores range from a one to five on the, the advanced placement exams. Uh, many colleges and universities hold the determination on whether or not the advanced placement credit will be accepted or not. So it's something that we have very little impact on, very little um, opportunity to really, to impact. It's really subjective to each of the college and universities uh, transfer credits regarding how they accept AP courses. Um, it is widely accepted by many colleges and universities, um, and the score acceptance ranges from a three to a five, and again, there's a high level of vari variability between class to class and between universities as well. The curriculum for an advanced placement class is set by the college board, so it's something, again, that we follow the curriculum that's been developed over time. And there is a very rigorous professional development that our teachers have to go through in order to be able to teach a, um, a an AP course through College Board. Dual enrollment, while still having the opportunity to earn college credit, um, students enrolled in dual enrollment have both a transcript from the high school as well as a transcript from the dual enrollment program. So they're duly enrolled in both high school and college at the same time. Um, again, the college, and, uh, the college credits are awarded by the partnering university or college, and it may impact um, student placement when they move into college. But the credits, just like AP, are also, also highly subjective to the, um, the transfer policies that are set by the colleges and universities. So again, it's an area that we have very little impact over about which colleges accept um, certain credits and, and whatnot. In most cases, the curriculum is set and guided by the partnering college and university as well. Do we, pro do we provide that information to the students when they take them that a lot of colleges limit the number of credits they accept for these uh, credits? Our, our Future Planning Center does a great job of that, um, and we do indicate that the colleges really determine th that practice, and we can help guide them with looking into that, and in a minute, Ms. Benner can talk a little bit about that. Um, but it is something that we talk about, and uh, the College Board also has a website which indicates the different universities and their requirements as well for each of the exams. So it is a factor that we have little, little control over, but we do our best to try and communicate that with them as well. In reference to advanced placement, we currently offer 26 advanced placement courses, an additional um, advanced placement course through our virtual high school. We are currently in the process of exploring the AP microeconomics and world history courses as well. But below you'll see a list of our repertoire of AP courses that we're currently offering within the district. We have several points of pride in reference to, um, to our advanced placement and the success of our advanced placement program within Spring Ford. Right now we have 736 students who took 1,338 exams. So many of our students are taking multiple exams. And this was in, for the, the last 2018-19 um, school year. 79% of our students earned a score of three, four, or five. Um, our senior high school has also been awarded the AP Honor Roll eight out of the nine times that the AP Honor Roll has existed, which is a, a really difficult honor to achieve, but it's something that we, we are very prideful regarding. Right now, only 46 high schools in Pennsylvania have made the AP Honor Roll for the 2017-18 school year, and the information is not out yet for this upcoming school year, so we're still hopeful that that's gonna be looking good for our past school year. We also offer opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, um, for students to take an expanded repertoire of AP courses through our virtual high school. And currently we do have three students enrolled for the 18, for the 1920 school year to um, take additional AP courses through that avenue. 
Another opportunity that we have is Project Lead the Way. Project Lead the Way is not quite AP and it's not quite dual enrollment. Um, it's very similar, um, having the same opportunities. It is a nationally recognized curriculum. It's a very rigorous, heavily weighted course and students are required to take an end of course exam just like the AP exam. Uh, many post-secondary institutions recognize the Project Lead the Way courses because of the robust curriculum that's associated with that and there are also admissions um, preferences and possibly course credits that are offered in reference to the Project Lead the Way as well. There is a partnership between AP um, advanced placement and Project Lead the, the Way as well so students can get an indication on their transcript that indicates that they're taking both AP courses and Project Lead the Way. We're currently offering Introduction to Engineering, Principles of Engineering, Digital Electronics, Civil Engineering and Architecture, and Biomedical um, through Project Lead the Way. We're pleased to share with you some of the data regarding our Project Lead the Way courses last year. We have um, 106 completed courses that are eligible for credits from the last school year through the Rochester Institute of Technology, and it's really from um, a representation of all of our Project Lead the Way courses. Um, in order to obtain this um, opportunity to earn credit with a Project Lead the Way course, students must have an average of 85 in the class and score six or higher on that end of year assessment. Now shifting gears slightly to dual enrollment. Most of our dual enrollment is guided by board policy 217. So you'll see reflections of that piece throughout our presentation. And I know this text is extremely small, so I apologize. We have um, several opportunities for dual enrollment already in place. Um, the first we have our KD University, which are um, courses that are taking, taken by Springford Area School District students that are taught by Arcadia professors. Um, we have two courses that are currently offered in this avenue. Our second partnership is through Montgomery County Community College and there are four different options for our students through Montgomery Community College. The first option is for students to enroll as a full-time Montgomery County Community College student where students would take all of their courses at the community college campus and may occur as early as junior year. Um, the acceptance into this program may be impacted by placement exams, again, of which are, are controlled by Montgomery County Community College. The second option is a part-time enrollment through Montgomery County Community College, where students take the major courses in Springford, but take the, the minor courses or elective courses at the campus of Montgomery County Community College. The third option is where, um, an option where our teachers are serving as adjunct professors for Montgomery County Community College and are teaching courses on campus as adjunct professors. And our fourth option with, with Montgomery County Community College is um, an option where students are taking a course that is being taught by um, a community college professor. We are currently in the process of exploring additional opportunities such as Westchester University um, to see if we can continue increasing our opportunities for dual enrollment courses. There are several considerations that as a curriculum department we really need to consider heavily as looking for dual enrollment courses because each, um, each university and each partnership with universities work a little bit differently. Each university has their own set of requirements and this may impact um, something like scheduling. For example, some courses may run on a college schedule Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we as a district have to get creative in how we're going to manage a schedule such as that and how we're going to make that work for the students. <clears throat> um, many universities also have a set of teacher requirements and many of the partnering universities like to see teachers certifications where teachers have um, master's degree in the content area. So many teachers in education have master's degree in education, but that wouldn't necessarily give them the certification to be able to teach a math class. Many universities want to see a partnership where your teachers have a master's degree in math or in science and so forth. Um, just as some of the other examples, um, we do follow the curriculum requirements of the partnering university as well, and it typically mirrors a course that's being offered on campus pretty closely. Another factor in consideration is that students also, um, students and families assume all of the costs for dual enrollment courses 
and unfortunately, students are not eligible for financial aid until they've graduated high school. Currently, according to our board policy, students who are enrolled in, in um, dual enrollment opportunities do have some preferences, such as the campus privilege, <coughs> um, and also students carrying a greater, um, carrying seven credits or greater will not have um, a second dual enrollment course calculated into their GPA. In addition, if a student is not permitted, um, a student is not permitted to drop any um, dual enrollment courses after the spring semester as well. Again, this is all indicated in Board Policy 217. <clears throat> currently, we have approximately 300 students who are currently participating in a dual enrollment course for the 2019-20 school year. We, and we have 40 of those students who are taking more than one dual enrollment course. And several students are also enrolled in not only dual enrollment courses, but also AP courses. We also have opportunity for early college admission program where students um, can enroll in a program and have the opportunity to enroll early in a college admissions program. Um, they must have completed the 11th grade, <coughs> excuse me, must have a cumulative GPA of 90% or higher and must have attended Springford Area School District for at least one year. Um, they, in addition, they must maintain a C average. Um, Throughout their, throughout their freshman year of college, and um, credits are presented for the diploma must include all courses mandated by the State Board of Education requirements. <clears throat> At this point, I'd like to ask Ms. Trish Benner, our College and Career Coordinator, to discuss how all of these opportunities are presented and shared with students. Thank you. Hi everyone, I would say uh, the majority of the information about dual enrollment comes from me. Um, we have a lot of information about dual enrollment on our Future Planning Center website, which I'm constantly promoting. So if you haven't been on there, please go on and check it out. There's a lot of great information. Those of you with children in the district who have come through, you know that there's a lot, a lot of emails that I send out regularly. So I'm really targeted with the information that I send out. So this is not going to the masses. It's usually targeting the grade levels where it's appropriate, where students are being invited to these programs to participate. So in January, we have our AP dual enrollment night. This is the night where we basically advertise to students, if you're interested in getting any college credit while you're in high school, come out and learn about all the opportunities that we offer. We have information about the Project Lead the Way RIT connection. We have information about AP, um, the AP program and how they can get credits that way. And we also have representatives from Arcadia who travel out to come and talk to students about the Arcadia program. And we have our representative from Montgomery County Community College come out to answer questions about all of the different opportunities with Montgomery County Community College as they were just explained there. So Jan January is really their first introduction because they'll start selecting their classes in February and they'll start meeting with their counselors. So a lot of these conversations after it gets um, sparked at that meeting are happening in the counselor's offices one-on-one, -on -one, really determining whether or not this is the appropriate fit for the student. Because, you know, that, that full-time dual enrollment and part-time dual enrollment is a huge time commitment for the students. And a lot of times there's some other sacrifices that come into play. They're sacrificing maybe an after-school activity that they were really interested in, or just that aspect of being able to eat lunch with your friends in the cafeteria for one more year. So that's important. I know it sounds crazy as adults, but for kids that is really important. Uh, in February, we do have a dual enrollment assembly. So this is for our in-house dual enrollment classes. We get all of our dual enrollment teachers in the building to come in and give a three to five minute advertisement basically for their classes. How fun it's gonna be, what they're gonna be doing, what colleges typically take those credits, um, and how it can really benefit them. That is really, really well attended. Kids get to miss a period of class. They come down to the auditorium. They get a lot of great information. And we've seen our, in our numbers really increase from hosting that every year. And then in March and April, we actually um, encourage students who are interested in doing full-time dual enrollment to come in and take the placement 
contest with us. We usually host that for seniors who are planning to attend Monaco next year, but it's also open for those full-time dual enrollment students so they don't have to go out to campus to take that placement test. And then in April, we do a field trip out to Montgomery County Community College. So students who are interested in full-time dual enrollment as juniors are invited exclusively to come on that field trip so that they can see what campus looks like and see what um, the real feel would be like if that's where they decide to go. And we did have a few students take advantage of that last year. Um, we also have in May, the first step of dual enrollment will occur. They actually apply to the dual enrollment program. So whether it's uh, Arcadia or Monco, they have to actually do a college application, which is a little intimidating for some students. So they'll do that in the future planning center with us. And then in August, we invite them to come in over the summer before school even starts to actually register for their classes. So this is kind of a confusing concept to a lot of students. I registered for it already for, through spring forward. Now I have to register again. What does that mean? Um, so that's really committing to taking that college course on the college end so they can get that college credit. September and March, we do have Monco and Arcadia both in attendance at our college and career fair. So students can come and talk to those reps directly if they did have questions that night about dual enrollment. Um, in October, we have Monco coming to campus. They ju actually just did this last week. Um, they come in and they have a huge dual enrollment and admissions meeting for students interested in in taking courses with Montgomery County Community College. Um, and then August through December is the first semester and January through May is the second semester. So again, it does follow that college schedule. So some of the scheduling concerns do come up for students and how they're gonna fit in all of their credits and um, how this is gonna really benefit them. So we do push out a lot of information. Last year we did get snowed out for that January event. So the next slide has a little video. Um, and when I say little, it's like 18 minutes long. So you're not gonna sit through that. But you can hit play for a little bit and just you know, see how great it looks. Um, we did feature a couple different AP programs where they were highlighted in the classroom talking about what they love about their AP classes. Um, and we just kind of talk about you know what we offer at Springford as far as dual enrollment and AP. It's also on the website if it doesn't work. No big deal. <laughs> Thank you. So it is, it is posted on the website. Again, we weren't planning on showing the entire 18 minutes now, but um, a great opportunity to highlight some of the programs that we already have in place. I just want to ask one quick question. Sure. There's no guarantee that the credits that you get in dual enrollment are going to be accepted by the college that you end up going right. to is there. So, and even if the credits are accepted, the grades aren't necessarily accepted. So correct. it's really important that the students be aware of these possible pitfalls in uh, dual enrollment courses. It is a factor of consideration that there, there's no guarantee that each university is going to accept those credits. Um, but on the positive side as well, colleges and universities like to see students take, taking challenging and rigorous um, high school programs. So it's still, even if it's not transferred, it is an opportunity for students to highlight that they can handle a college level course. Um, but it is a factor that's important that we do share with our, our students. And at the majority of colleges, you're going to find that the classes that we offer from an AP perspective will qualify for some sort of, even if it's an elective, um, to get you towards, you know, that's that could be the difference between an extra semester in school or not. Absolutely. And, and with community college, for example, I mean, that, that holds true with, with transferring credits from community college anywhere, but for the most part, you're going to see you know, your 100 level courses, 200 level courses being accepted um, from a transfer perspective. Usually they'll limit the number of courses, but again, that's pretty consistent regardless of whether the student takes that through a dual enrollment or independently. 
Absolutely. In reference to next steps in this process, we are looking at expanding our repertoire and we are considering AP microeconomics as well as AP world history. Um, we are also continuing to explore co-op opportunities and job shadowing opportunities. And we are also looking into additional dual enrollment opportunities through partnerships that I mentioned earlier, such as Westchester or the University of Pittsburgh College and High School program. Is, is the uh, co-op and job shadowing just college type stuff or is that anything? It, it would be anything. Um, and there may not, may not necessarily be college credit attached to it, but it's again another career pathway opportunity just to expose students. So we really would have to dig into that piece a little bit more to see what that would look like further. With all the local universities we have, are we looking at them as opposed to Pittsburgh? We are. This, again, some of the challenges that we have is um, what the requirements are by the universities. And I can share that it, it, sometimes being able to find the right teacher who has the right certification and following the course, it's, um, it's a balance. So I think we're exploring all opportunities, um, certainly trying to find anything that's close to here um, so that we can offer as many courses as possible. Um, but I, I know the, the Pittsburgh is appealing because our teachers would teach those courses. So it's a nice opportunity to find that balance as well. I think Pitt's pretty popular among our student um, body, but also how I see, well, the University of Pitt, it's a, it is. No, is that Pitt? Yes. 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 <laughs> That's, wow. okay. It, sorry. sorry. But I, I also it's see that. Pennsylvania, Tom. That, <laughs> How close can they get to an actual associate's degree? How close can somebody get to an actual associate's degree before they before they graduate? So I think it depends on the student. If, um, if a student really wants to, um, we could help them come up with a plan to be able to get that. Um, we do have many of our students who are graduating with nine plus credits, and we have as many as 15 to 21. Now, if a student really wants to pursue an early um, associate's degree, they can, but it does come with a certain degree of sacrifices that the student does have to make because they will lose out in some of the high school experience. So I think what's important that we're, we're sharing today is that we have, uh, our summary of, of college credit opportunities is th there's something for everyone in that if you want to go and get your associate's degree, we can help students pursue that. But if they want to be able to pick up some courses, get some credit, um, but still have a full robust high school experience, they can still have that as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it really depends on what the student is interested in um, and what the families are interested in and um, being able to manage that. So in summary, the opportunities that we are currently offering includes our advanced placement courses, Project Lead the Way, dual enrollment, the early college applications um, admissions process, where we are seeing many of our students successful with leaving with many credits. Questions? So I have a question on the, so where you had shared, um, I guess, with the, the Monco um, full enrollment. Mm -hmm. So that can start as early as junior year. And so I know, you know, obviously we have certain um, state requirements for our students um, to complete high school. So, for example, English, which I'm, I'm sure they can take the English classes, phys ed as well. Yep, um, there's So, classes, you know, is that matched, is that kind of mapped and is that available to all of our students? It is available to all of our students. They do have to purchase a phys ed credit at Montgomery County Community College if they decide to do the full-time dual enrollment, which is a little bit of a bummer, I get it, but some <laughs> colleges do require it. Penn State still right requires there. a phys ed requirement, <laughs> so it does transfer in some situations. But yeah, any student can do that. It's just not a super popular option to give up your whole day in high school right. to be on a college campus. And it's, I mean, I see the seniors as they're leaving. They're scared as seniors leaving at 18 years old to go on a college campus. To be, uh, how old are 10th graders? 16. 16, yeah. deciding that you're going to embark on this whole new open journey where there's yeah. no bells and you're just expected to know where your classes are and understand scheduling. And uh, that's, that's a big undertaking. And we do support them through it, certainly. But um, even last year when we had a couple juniors who went and toured the college with us and said that they were doing full-time dual enrollment, we had a couple back out at the last minute. And I think some of it was nerves and I think a lot of it was finances also. Um, if you are a family that would typically receive financial aid, you cannot receive financial aid before graduating. So you are paying full cost for this. So if you were gonna pay full cost anyway, no big deal. You right. can 
save some money going to Monco. But if you're looking at possibly getting huge discounts after you graduate through, you know, PA state grants and things like that, right. you kind of want to wait for that money. Yeah. Thank you. So do, did, have we ever had any student do a yeah. full? Yeah, yeah. yeah, two years ago, we had a student graduate with a full associate's degree. She went to Bloom. She had a huge scholarship at Bloom. She's doing very well. Um, but it's, it, it's, she was a specific, like, special kind of student. She was very motivated. She was very mature. She moved in from another district, so she wasn't connected with Spring Ford right. already. So it, it really, it, it depends. You know, you're missing out on Spirit Week. You're sure. missing out on, uh, those things are important. <laughs> and then, are those students, do they still have the opportunity to kind of come back and participate? So they're, they're still allowed dual enrolled, to. right? So they're... They so are allowed to, but they're district. not going to dress up for Spirit Week on Monco's campus. No, but and I mean, yeah. they can come so, back. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but, um, and they can come back and participate, but it depends on what their schedule is, right. and they're going to be on a completely different campus, so to come back, it's a little tricky. It, it takes a little just, bit of work, yeah. Just curious, like, what, you know, what's available? Yeah, definitely available. Great, thank you. So the, the, option, is avail the option is available for a student that if they want to go and pursue and get as close to associate degree as possible, they have that option today. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that if you do that through Monco, Monco has partnerships with several universities that will take their credits. Very, very good universities. Right, so Drexel, and, yeah. Temple, I believe they, there's at least three or four or more universities that will transfer their credits. Not yes. only that, you apply, I believe, as a transfer yes, student. Yes, you are applying as a transfer student. So you get student. actually more preferential uh, treatment when you, yeah. Right, because I know, I know students that started at Monco and then they ended up, and they went, ended up going to Drexel, you know. Starting at Monco, I really don't want anyone to take me the wrong way here. Starting at Monco is a fantastic option. Getting your associates at Monco is wonderful. It saves you a ton of money. But what we're talking about is giving up the last two years of high school to get a Right, but that's not, we yeah. got that. But yeah. that's not for us to, that's the, the, the student's decision. Yes. And there are, so I don't want to keep going back to yeah. giving up, giving up. This is, the point of this is that all I care about right now is that there are options available that students can, if they want to go in this direction, those options are available. You guys, the staff is ready to work with them. Uh, what happens if they want to, if they wanted to go to a different, like they picked out a university. Let, let's just say they yeah, want to go to Villanova. That's and, the early college admissions program. So they would have to go through that route. Yep. They would have to go that route because we don't already have that partnership right. established. And but, they would have to meet that criteria because that's some pretty high criteria also for that program. Well, sure, and that and that's. But then again, it's does do we at some point revisit that criteria? Does it, I don't know if it makes sense or not. Was the criteria established? It's for, relatively new. Huh. When we when we revamped the policy just recently, we did change it a little bit. So it has been altered within the last three years. Dr. Roach and I did that. Okay. Yeah. So, but the, the big message is, is that there are options available for students if they want to be able to take a jump start on their college education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is, it is frustrating at the universities how they have this gimmick, and I, and I call it a gimmick, uh, when they sit there and say, you know, they won't accept credits from here, credits from there, because it all comes down to money. And what we're trying to do is give the kids an opportunity to go to, and Monco's probably considered one of the best community colleges in the country. Um, and it gives them an opportunity to start their college career, start getting these college credits at a very reasonable price. And for a university to sit there and not accept them, that's just, it just all comes down to money because, and we all know that, mm -hmm. but then everybody wants to talk about the student loan debt. This is a prime example of what goes on, you know, in the country with these universities. And this is, this is, like I said, this is a prime example of it. Yeah. So, okay, well then you guys are doing a great job of promoting and, and pushing, not pushing, but promoting this and, ha and making sure that, the, but we, we are, t so the target audience is the students, but how do we get this information out to the parents mm -hmm. as well? They're copied on every Everything. Message. I don't actually think students read emails, no offense to all the students. <laughs> I think it's all parents, so they're copied on everything. Yeah, and I, and I can say as a parent of two recent graduates um, that were students here, it, it is nice when we went to 
school and we had nine credits in our pocket already. Um, so for anyone that has the opportunity for dual enrollment or advanced placement, I encourage it. Take the, take the leap, give it a try because, and there's parents around this table that have students have been able to take credits off to college as well and it's quite a, it's quite a feather in your cap. Yeah, my freshman is telling my uh, eighth and 10th grader, take as many AP courses as you can because <laughs> it's gonna be a whole extra semester in school for her yeah. to get all her the credits thing in. About, you have to be careful too to do as much homework as you can because not all APs are, select, are accepted everywhere and even if you do get credits, sometimes they'll still make you take the course over again. So there's a couple pieces there that we really try to be very formative so that everyone knows everybody's different. Every college has their own, their own game plan. Yeah, and I think so, that that's a point of clarity, even though every college has their differences, every student has their differences too. And I think Trish, you pointed it out very well to say, you know, what kids are willing to do at whatever point of their life that they're at. And so even though a college may not take it as the first level year course for an AP, they may still offer it as an elective. Yeah. And I know personally, from personal experience as well, as Dr. Uh, Nugent alluded to, that yes, both of my girls took that and um, both of them were, well, my freshman can potentially graduate a semester early or take graduate level cl classes potentially the last part of her senior year based on the fact that she went in with nine to 12 in her pocket. Yeah, I think it's important also note, and, and the board would know this, but for the audience's sake as well, it doesn't necessarily relate to dual enrollment or AP, but we do have early graduation option as well. So students are made privy to that. So if you need to, if you want to graduate a year early, that's in the mix too. You just have to get that planning done ahead of time. And I will tell you that our future planning staff is on target. They know what they're talking about and they'll be very, very helpful. Just to kind of um, expand on that a little bit, even now we're, we're in the college search right now in my house. And that is one thing that we're hearing. Take the AP courses, take the dual enrollment courses. And even if you score a five on the AP, certain colleges will still require you to take right. certain courses. They want you to have their bio, their chem, their, which is fine, which is great, but it does count as elective. So you're still, you're still ahead of the game. Plus you have that exposure to the rigor in that kind of, in that kind of a course and what's coming down the road. There's, a, there's, there's just more of an emphasis on getting ready. It, it also yeah. helps you get into the very tougher schools. Absolutely. But, but a lot of times, Colleen, you'll find that that, especially if that's a major. So if you're taking biology and you're going to be a science major or a biology major, because every class she takes subsequent to that will be build on that baseline. So they want you to take that baseline. But, you know, we are, and, and Mr. DeVello, you pointed this out, and I, I think it's, you know, worth repeating. Monco is an outstanding community college, and we are really lucky. And, and you know, the partnerships that Monco has with other colleges and universities, not only in Pennsylvania but but beyond, um, you know, is is incredible. And students who do attend Monco and complete two years um, have the opportunity to transfer and be direct transfers without having to go through a full application process. I mean, they've got amazing programs for our students, and so it's you know I I love that you you know continue to offer those opportunities to our students and and remind them, um, you know, of all the benefits just right in our backyard. Yeah, um, come home in the summer and take a summer class between your freshman and sophomore year and take those credits back with you. Exactly. We did that as yep. well. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's, it, you know, so uh, having one on far away and one at Monco, it's, uh, you know, we, we've got great resources and, and certainly the AP programs and, and dual enrollment programs here are outstanding. So thank and, you. And we appreciate, honestly, we appreciate the board support as well because we wouldn't have all these programs without the finances and funding. I mean, it's it's been a big a big piece of uh, the success that we've had, and especially some of the support you've given us with um, the testing and such. I just wanted to say I take a dual enrollment. I take um, speech and communications, which is offered here. And um, that is one of my favorite classes I take this year. It's every other day on the six-day cycle. So I have the even days in the cycle, and I absolutely love it, and I find it so interesting, and it is exposing me to what it's going to be like when I go into college, and not even just the scheduling of it, but how the class is going to run and the stuff I'm going to have to do for those classes. So.
Well, we're really glad that you've taken all those all the resources that we can give you and, and come back with this kind of programming for our students because it, it really is just a great opportunity. You're not going to find this everywhere. So, and it's a big student body. I mean, so you're working with large numbers and you're putting out these programs, events, and form information nights, all of that, and we are all very appreciative of what you guys do. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Great presentation.